you're 300% more likely to set up a business as, as, as an ADHD brainer. That doesn't necessarily mean it's going to work. Mm. Uh, and that, that's because we can create ideas really quickly. I think from the, what I've learned about a lot of professionals and successful people is we actually quite like the, the sort of the feedback that hurts a little bit, but makes us go away and think. If you're a marketing company that does all that stuff for them, you want a done done with you and for you service, in essence, really, for ADHD brainers. Welcome back to another episode of the Ultimate Marketing Podcast. Uh, with myself, Vish, we have the formidable D and the absolutely amazing Sarah Cox with us as well. Uh, as our special guest for this episode, we have got our second special guest uh, who's actually in his own studio. We've moved to a slightly different recording format. So as opposed to being in a uh, podcast studio where we're all sat together, uh, we are recording this using the powers of the interweb. And before I introduce our amazing guest. I'm going to hand over to D for his absolutely special introduction. Special? Yeah. <laughs> he's not, he's not that special. That. Well, he is. <laughs> he is. Come on. Uh, listen, uh, this gentleman who we've got on for you today, honestly, um, if you... Uh, if, if you don't know him, then honestly, you are missing out. So uh, myself and this gentleman, um, we met on Clubhouse uh, and then uh, post pandemic, I don't know if you're allowed to say that anymore, but post pandemic, uh, we became honestly really, really good friends. And um, he's a serial entrepreneur, um, he has run several businesses. And um, more recently, he has turned his attention to helping um make really business simple for ADHD brainers. <gasps> and here's the interesting thing. There was just a few facts and I thought, let me just, let me just check a few facts out. And this is by the, um, let's just have a quick look at this. So this is by the, by Toy, Tony Lloyd, CEO of the UK ADHD foundation. And he says, his quote is, research shows that 30% of entrepreneurs have ADHD or dyslexia or both. And that university gradu graduates with ADHD are twice as likely to start their own business. Um, and the the percentage is actually higher in the States. So these are just for people who obviously have been diagnosed with ADHD. So we've got Elliot Brown, who's going to be talking to us a little bit about how marketing can be made simple for the ADHD brainers. And I think given that our audience are somebody who uh, are people who are entrepreneurs, business owners, marketeers, um, it'll be really interesting to hear what Elliot's got to say. So give it up for Elliot Brown. Woo <laughs> Interesting. The stats dictate. Music, don't yeah, we? Yeah, we need some like intro music. The stats dictate, right? Stats dictate that people in the audience right now, if you're listening to this podcast, chances are that some of you will and some of you won't have ADHD. Now, a very interesting point, Elliot, you raised before we started was um, how a lot of people self-diagnosed mm. after like watching stuff on TikTok, and it's not, you know, it's not as open or openly communicated here in the UK as it is in the USA. So, do you want to give us like your 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 story around how you kind of found out? that you did. Uh, and basically, for some people who may not understand what ADHD is because of the uh, misinformation or misinterpretation of it online, what actually is it? Yeah, I mean, this is this is always a, a, a sort of an interesting question asked, isn't it? I mean, I, I, I literally, I mean, people that know me for years have, have said to me since obviously I talk about this a lot more and everybody knows I'm involved in ADHD in the community and in business as well that you know well we knew you were anyway I wish somebody had told me years beforehand I mean you know only only really discovered this because of as Danita said it on Clubhouse which is uh, you know an audio only uh, app that was came out second year in lockdown um, that I was listening in rooms uh, and there was these these were big rooms so virtual rooms of speakers if people don't know what the, what Clubhouse is and uh, and there was a lot of these high level CEOs, high level marketing execs, you you know, big multi million pound business owners in the US, all talking around new tropics so this one this one night. So we had two or three o'clock in the morning, another sleepless night doing audio basically. And um and I am so I'm listening to to new tropics. I'm I'm trying to understand what that is. And then finding out that 
a lot of these really successful, creative, visionary entrepreneurs, you know, like the Richard Branson's of the world, like the Elon Musk's, you know, that are ADHD, they, they own it. Um, these guys had, had been on Ritalin and other drugs uh, that, 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 you know, prescribed for this. And, you know, that's people's choice. But what they were finding is that it was taking away their creativity um, and, and sort of leveling themselves out, almost normalizing their, their, their sort of, I dare to don't say superpower because you'll get some bad rep back, 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 back from that. But, you know, super, let's say there are abilities that come with it uh, and there are challenges. So, and I'm listening, I'm thinking, yeah, that resonates with me. I'm, 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 that's definitely being, that, oh, that answers a lot of questions. And so started then sort of reaching out to a lot of these guys and girls and, and learning from them and, of course, got to know them. And now we have great international network because of it. And I learned a lot from this and they turned to new tropics because it didn't dumb down that sort of ability that comes with the ADHD, but stop the anxiety and the sort of overthinking, the, the, you know, the, 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 the memory retention and things like that, which, which a lot of CBD and lion's mane, et cetera, works for. And of course, there are other products out there, natural products that work really well for people with similar brains. Um, and and these are mar- a lot of these are marketing execs and marketing companies as well, big marketing businesses. So clearly, these guys know the difference between that creation creativity and how to harness that and 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 not as the case may be so i then uh, i think a, a doctor that uh, works a psychotherapist that works in, with adhd um we got on a phone call and over sort of 40 45 minutes he, he diagnosed me if, well, in fact he diagnosed me in about five minutes but we carried on talking um <laughs> And it, so, so it became very apparent. Now, I haven't been diagnosed here in the UK, and I'm happy to admit that. I don't particularly want to go through the process, though I am thinking about it just so I can maybe educate people. So I am looking at that right now. But I don't necessarily feel the need to. And I think this is an important part of it, right? That you yeah. don't always, you don't need to be diagnosed. The fact that we're aware of the abilities that come with it, the fact that we're aware of the challenges and we can maybe reach out and speak to people to find out and learn more about it. I think that's a really important thing. And that's why, of course, it's been prevalent on TikTok the last few years and socials. So, uh, and a lot of these are creatives, just like you guys, marketing people. You know, it's such a big part of our business these days that the biggest challenge is big picture thinking. You know what you want to do. You know, understand how to get there. In fact, you know how to get there very quickly. And then you don't know how to take those first steps. And that's what hopefully we're going to sort of chat about. And I'm going to ask you some questions and we'll talk around that today with a bit of luck. <laughs> with a bit yeah. of that. Oh, there'll be loads. This, this podcast could it, go It probably on could, forever. to be fair. Does, did, 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 I mean, I'm an ADHD, so I might have gone off on a tangent, but did I wrap that up into a package okay there? You absolutely <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, definitely. <laughs> that's your hyper-focus coming out in here. That's what it is. <laughs> And I think there's a few things that have come out of that and, and that, you know, and, and which we'll touch upon, I think. And, and that is definitely the whole big thinking versus destination, you know, where you want to go and just not knowing the detail in between. The fact that the entrepreneurial world is, you know, it, and that creative world are likely, not likely, but, you know, they they do have ADHD, a, a big majority of them. Uh, and, and then really understanding how we can then, you know, how these individuals can actually make sense of the world. Because I think one of the big stigmas of it is when you're given that label, and I love the fact that you talked about it's, you you know, the abilities first, like what are the abilities that are available? When actually when people are given that label, they immediately, not so much entrepreneurs, but just generally people, they they look more at the challenges. So I think uh, I'd love to ask you, Elliot, in your opinion, and obviously being mm. diagnosed yourself, what what are the abilities? What makes, you know, I, I don't mind using yeah. the word superpower because I think that any any condition um, that you have, there are advantages to that. There are things that you can do once you are more aware of it. And awareness is the power, Absolutely. isn't it? Once you know what it is, then you know what, what you can play with and how you can leverage that. So how can people who have ADHD, how can they leverage that in a good way, especially entrepreneurs, marketers, creative Yeah, I mean, and you, you, you're right. And it, it, it is that creativeness. You know, the visionary CEOs tend to, you know, have that trait, you know, as you said at the beginning, Vish, I think you said you were sort of saying, or, or, or Denise D, you were saying around uh, the amount of, you know, entrepreneurs, 30%. I mean, you're 300% more likely to set up a business as, as, as an ADHD brainer. That doesn't necessarily mean it's going to work. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that that's because we can create ideas really quickly. Um, I've been tapping into ADHD groups recently and asking them, 
uh, you know, whether they, you know, their solopreneur set a business up, et cetera, just to engage in conversation, learning as much as I can from other people. And it's so varied. It's a whole, it's a contradiction in terms ADHD. You know, you have a, you have a complete, you can super hyper focus and then you get distracted as easily as, as anything else. Of course, the squirrel scenario is the thing that comes up a lot. And funny enough, I love squirrels. We all love squirrels, right? But we, you know, I'll notice a squirrel in the garden now, probably if it was climbing over here while we're talking and, and sort of disappear off wondering what that squirrel is going to do for lunch, you know, but, and that's, that's the sort of thing that people talk about a lot. So it's not just about super, super uh, hyper-focusing and, and distractions. It's, it is that big picture thinking. It is being able to work out things very quickly. We are much better at solution, uh, sort of problem solving and coming up with solutions for other people than we are ourselves because we've got all of those thoughts in our head helping other people. We can help them get the necessary bits out by asking questions and then be able to develop a solution or, or understand the problem first. And that's where we, where, where we can be really good as CEOs not the best manager of people and not great implementers a lot of the time. This is going to resonate with a lot of people, I would have thought, because they're going to be thinking, you know, I don't really like doing these things. And my phrase, as Dean knows, is if you can't do, won't do, and don't do it, you really shouldn't be doing it in business. And the smarter the people, or not just smarter, let's rephrase that, the people that are able to be able to get a profitable business quite quickly by utilizing their skill and then stepping out of the way are the businesses that tend to grow and last. Um, and, And I think that is what happens a lot. So, you sort of asked what it is, There's the strengths. There is a lot of solutions, a lot of problem solving, a, a, a bit of create ideas, infuse other people, be able to talk about stuff, be very practical. And we can do everything quite well or very well if we put our minds to it. That can also be a big problem in business when it comes to us then having to do those things, which really matter. We've done them before. Why can't we then do them again without worrying about it and overthinking? And so we get in our own way, like we know that entrepreneurs do. Now we're starting to realize that so many are ADHD or neurodiverse. There is a alternative, which is why I prefer the word alternative. There is an alternative way of thinking for um, mm. uh, whether you're dyslexic or I've got dyscalculia, so I'm number blind. Um, great with words, but the other way around. There's, so we have an ability to do certain things and work different things out in different ways. Um, so, you know, we know that um, uh, autism, you know, in, with, you know, there's a lot of autistic people that are high, quite high up in banks because they're very good at working things out quickly. Yeah. So if they found their abilities, and I think we need to find those abilities and work on that, that doesn't stop the problem when you're a small business owner is understanding what you need to do first to get to use that super ability. Mm. Super ability. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. And I think that language is really important, isn't it? Because, you know, seeing it as an ability, seeing it as a strength, seeing and, and having that awareness. And I had a, um, and Vish knows, I have a really good friend who was also a client, um, Yasmin Sheikh. She was a wheelchair, she was in a wheelchair due to a, a, a spinal um, uh, paralysis. But she always talked about, you know, just in terms of being a wheelchair mm-hmm. user, that one rather than, you know, a, you know, just that one sentence made her that gave her that ability and gave people the 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 awareness that she has the ability to use a an instrument rather than it feeling like she was bound right. in a wheelchair mm. and i think that language element is really important yeah. isn't it for adhd brainers as to how they then communicate um their abilities to themselves. Yes, would you yes, say? absolutely. I mean, you've. I think sometimes we've got to cut out the wheat to see the chaff. Is that the, is that the way around? You know what I'm saying. Mm. You've and yeah, yeah, yeah and and so chaff, yeah. you know when I um and and this isn't about um. I will say it. when I work with people or speak to people, I have done this for years. I you know I can get them yeah. to see clarity, get clarity because it's about filtering through all of that stuff that's overwhelming us or overthinking all that all the stuff out around the outside the things that actually don't really matter very much and we overthink those things yeah. and it's and, and and understanding the strengths and if we can own those strengths uh, and and we os- often have to reach out to people we know uh, that are going to be really honest with us as well and I talk about this a lot because you do need feedback from people that are going to be honest. You don't want somebody from a family member that's just going to stroke, stroke your ego and tell you, yeah, you're great at everything. That's the last thing we need, right? And none of us need this. And we will, we will have done this. Every, all of you guys, Sarah, Vish, D, you will have all done this at some stage because we, we want to personally develop. So we actually prefer, I think, I, I'll speak for you guys, I, th- I think from the what I've learned about a lot of professionals and successful people is we actually quite like the, the sort of the feedback that hurts a little bit but makes us go away and think. Um, 
and yeah. and it does you know emotionally it it can it can really sting ADHD brains that have sensory issues as well or or, or you know if we feel a bit unjust by being but we'll evaluate it and when we can sort of authorize sort of tick off the fact that yeah do you know what that is my strength then we can start working within it and I, and I, and I like to do that with people I always have done um, I think that's one of my sort of strengths yeah. I suppose stats are great right you know. You spoke about the thirty percent earlier on, but even yeah. if if entrepreneurism is not your thing, setting up your business is not your thing. Like companies are more aware of neuro- neurodivergent people, and I I For love sure. the term neurodivergence because it doesn't pigeonhole you into oh shit he's got ADHD oh. Oh shit! Absolutely, cool. neuro spi- neuro spicy yeah. vish is even yeah, nicer. Mate, that's, I quite that's like a that. sexier term, much sexier than neurodivergent. Yeah. And you know, like I went to a cyber security conference a couple of weeks ago. Really amazing stuff. It was amazing being there the whole day, um, but for parts of it. Um, and one of the companies were uh, very proud of the fact that they they actually employed twenty five percent of their staff were neurodivergent. And they were like, they are Perfect. in specialist roles within our businesses because mm. they they understand that they can highlight a superpower and go, right, that person there would have the best effect for us. Um, Absolutely. And I think like going, going around in circles, like knowing like horses for courses, like ADHD or neurodivergent, neurospicy business owners have got a skill. They've almost got to kind of set something up or whatever part they fit into that machine and then move out the way and let the other person take care of it because that's what... That's what you know needs to happen in that instance. But kind of, if we can draw the focus into marketing as well, like how, yeah, how does that kind definitely. of like funnel down into marketing? Like as a neurodivergent, neuro spicy business owner, what do you focus yeah. on for marketing? Because I suppose, like like you said, squirrel scenario. Like it's so easy to go, whoa, yeah. squirrel, right? And then go boom, yeah. and then go, what was I doing Get, again? Um, yeah. You know, or how do you help your clients? Because yeah. that's something that you do. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, my, mind mapping. Mind mapping is a yeah. big thing with me. It gives you a visual representation of things, so that way you can you can go, okay, what what is it? What sort of marketing do you need to do? Um, and then you know you have the main topic, you spider out from that subtopics, and then you can get granular. So that gives you something you could look at. It does help with memory retention, yeah. retention as well. Um, so so when it comes to the marketing, then that's how I would do it. I would break it down. But first of all. See, this is where everybody goes, well, how are you going to do the marketing? I genuinely think you need to wind it all the way back and start breaking down what those strengths are, what your differentiators are, the things that everybody talks about. Actually, not so much now, to be fair. Um, but get that really clear first, because otherwise you're trying to market something where you don't even know who you really are, who, what your business is doing, who your who your uh, potential, um, you know, who your outreach is going to, what your potential client is going to be or what your ideal client is, that avatar. So actually having it somewhere so you can break that down, understand it. Really, you've got to ask lots of questions um, as we all would, as you would, would as marketers and you are working with a client. You have to do that. Um, otherwise, you can't market for them, can you? You can't do the marketing for somebody without understanding that. This is the problem that I see time and time again is that you get these solopreneurs, small business owners, a lot of them are neurodiverse or whatever level, neurospicy. And they go to these training things, they get coaches, and then it doesn't work because they leave with the theoretical idea yeah. and, the, and the big picture idea of what they've got to do. What they then do is they go away and they go, well, I've got no assets. I've got, I've got, I've got no assets. I've got, I've got nothing. I've got to now go and create that. And then they spend loads of time creating yeah. stuff, right, which we've all been speaking about for years, without actioning anything, which means they're not making any profit. And so we've even done, not only just spoken about it, actually we've done that, haven't we, a lot of us? Oh God, I've done this. I've done this. I've done it successfully. And I've also done it massively unsuccessfully. Like, you know, spent a year messing about rebranding things and coming up with ideas. And I think that's the biggest problem. But when you do put it somewhere, it means you can go back to that and focus. Oh, that's what I was doing. Yeah. I, that's, I know I've got these three or four tasks to do. Let me block time, block those out and actually create the assets. Now I've got them somewhere. Now I can use them. Now I can create a funnel. Now I can create a landing page. Um, and you, you, you've got to wind everything back for big picture thinkers. Otherwise, do you, they're forever on that sort of hamster wheel of trying to figure out what do I do next before you even start marketing yourself. And we know oh, 50, 100 people will know at least that we've seen over the last, particularly the last five years with social media's sort of increase in the, for, for using for business. It's, uh, it, it's, a, it's, a real, it's a real challenge. It's a real struggle. And, uh, and that's something that is really difficult. You have to delve in and understand. They need to understand, not you. They actually need to understand it. So then they know what they need to do. Or 
they can then offload to somebody else and get them to do it. Um, so that's one of the biggest challenges, I think, personally. What do you think? Yeah, how do we help them implement? Yeah, so I think what I was just thinking about when you were talking there is like if we've got clients who have got ADHD and they're struggling with the implementation, because that's what I find sometimes yeah. people really struggle to get the stuff done. How can we support yeah. our clients with the implementation of what they need to do, particularly when it comes to marketing? Yeah, so if you were to use it, like the, I mean, I use a very, very simple um, you know, mind map model. I mean, mm-hmm. D, D's seen it, other people have seen it. It literally is. It's not, you know, there's uh, there are flowy sort of lines. I literally have, because it works better for my brain, a central point, spider off, subtopics. Then once you get to the get to the sort of granular part, when you sort of go off the subtopics, they become tasks. Just get them to time block. Right. And, and then you really need to have some sort of accountability in there as well. That word does not work for me. It's very uncomfortable. What do you use but support, a, just a support, Just support. Just a support call, how you're doing, maybe a WhatsApp. But when you – and you need them to be busy mm. because the less busy we are as ADHD brainers, the less productive we are. If you've got things blocked out in your calendar and you're busy all the time, you're going from one thing to the next, we're actually much better. It gives us structure. Um, and I think that's one of the things, if I was to say to you, Sherry, that question, mm-hmm. you need to give them structure that they do not like, but they have to, once they work within it and it becomes a busy, and once the ball starts rolling, it becomes a momentum, that snowball, then they start get, start seeing results. Once they get results, that raises the dopamine and they want to do more. If they get no, getting getting absolutely no results, I'm going to swear there. You would like to swear on your yeah. show? Um <laughs> when you're getting no results, it's really fucking difficult to get that dopamine level up to actually then do something else because you're not seeing anything. So you need to find some way that they're going to get a quicker result, a quick win, which is what I try and work on quite early. Get a quick win, raise that dopamine, show them some success and results, and then you can move on to something else. Does that make sense, Sarah? Totally makes sense. Yeah. And I think it's also that whole aspect, isn't it, of, and and this is something that you've kind of mentioned a couple of times, is this time blocking. Because, Because ADHD brainers are visionaries they are the people who create ideas so if they've got spare space in their brain they are off looking at the next thing aren't they next shiny object next thing so having that structure like you said even though they don't like it but it gives them the the it gives them the purpose almost that they need to get their idea off the ground even if it is through delegation and and checking in and and all of those things even if they're not doing the actual grunt work themselves but ultimately if you leave them if you leave them without that structure they're off creating more and more ideas right yeah and and Go go into that. Yeah, I, listen, structure it, but don't structure your day so you're just doing stuff every single yeah. hour. I mean, that's the worst possible thing to do. Anybody that says do these 20-minute blocks and you just keep doing that through the day, they're, <laughs> my head's going to explode. That's never going to work for me, and I don't think it's going to work for yeah. a lot of people. Maybe do two hours, an hour of this. You might get 20 minutes productive out, an hour, out of an hour. Maybe another hour of that, 20 minutes, maybe half an hour productive. Stop. Like, stop going for a yeah. walk. Go and do something else. That hour is just as productive. I call it creatively productive. Go for a walk or do some exercise. It filters the crap out and you start those ideas and the right things come out. Voice note it into mm. your phone and and sort of just put, put it there or a distraction note, notepad, which I've got yeah. one here. I don't use this as often as so I prefer my, my phone these days, but I've had this for, for a while. Write those things down and come back yeah. to it later on. Um, and that's really, really yeah. useful. Some of the gr- greatest marketing ideas or titles for a post can come from that walk. Yeah. So then you can use that when you're in productive time. Yeah, does that totally make does. sense? I want to yeah. flip the script a bit. I'm going to ask a question from the other side of the fence now, right? So we've asked oh, we've asked on. questions that you know how would as a business owner who has ADHD, how would you you know how would you market and, and plan your day, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Mm. But as a marketer, right? How would I then? attract the attention of someone who's got ADHD because uh, like you know by default if our if our listeners who are business owners are going to have ADHD then also their customers will also have ADHD potentially yeah. as well so how, how do you attract yeah. those people into your business I think that's a really important point to have a look at as well right yeah this is it, it's, it's it's quite interesting because a lot of people doing stuff on social media around ADHD yeah. Yeah. right but and the people that are, are successful yeah uh, it's, 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 it's a good question. I think you have to try stuff out, yeah, just like any other marketing. Some some of the some of the stuff that resonates with me isn't the stuff that's going to resonate with other ADHD yeah. people. I think a lot of the marketing that I'm seeing people do is is for ADHD coaching, and they are 
probably employed people, which is, you know, which is great. You know, we all need to employ people and there needs to be employed people. So that's, that's absolutely fine. And that's a great place for, as you said, Vish, creatives in those space, in those right roles as well. Um, so if you want to, to resonate with those, then I think you've got to do content that resonates around helping them on an emotional, personal level. If it's business, now, that doesn't necessarily always work. And I've had a few people come to me saying, you don't talk about the problems. You tend to talk about the solutions. You tend to think, and that resonates with the right people for me. There may not yeah. be as many, but I suppose that's being niche, isn't it? So I, I think it's, it, it's an, ADHD tends to be quite an emotional mm -hmm. thing. And we talk about marketing, tapping into the emotions. We often are, as business to business owners, trying to tap into those emotions, probably because they're similar sort of creative mm -hmm. brains, you know? Mm -hmm. And they tend to be the runners of the business, the creators of the business, not the market or the, or the marketing departments, potentially, or the marketing mm -hmm. people. So to answer your question, I think you've got to tap that emotion even more mm -hmm. so uh, on a personal level that's going to affect their business. Um, and I think if you can do that and you can tap into both sides, business and personal, I think you, you, that's where you're going to get the right people coming but towards what, you. That, Hopefully that does, answers mate, your question. Thank you for that. What's one, of the, like, what's one of the most biggest misconceptions people have about ADHD business owners and about ADHD customers like from the other side of the fence? What's one of the biggest things you've heard and you're like, nah, it's not right? Well, I mean, um, fidgeting seems to be a thing, but um, I think there's all sorts of versions of that. But I don't know whether that's. I, I think um, I think that there's a lot of there's a lot of self doubt that comes in. A lot of people talk about. I do agree with that, mm -hmm. right? I think we all have that anyway, but probably more prevalent in in that. Um, and uh, ang anxiety it can be a big thing. Okay, so I agree with that as well. I think one of the misconceptions is that we have loads of energy um, and 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 we can just do everything and we so, and we can multitask. That is one of the biggest misconceptions. We know multitasking is a lot of bullshit <laughs> anyway because you can't. Nobody can multitask. Not even women. Um, you can focus on. <laughs> not even women. Not even women. Sarah, and Sarah. I'm sorry. That'd get the it. power is Absolutely. in unitasking. That's Ooh. what it is. Yeah. It's it, you know, I love that unitask. You're right. Um, so it and and, and honestly, I, there's a lot of ADHD people that don't have huge amounts of energy. Just because when you see them on social, they have loads mm. of energy, they'll burn out really fucking yeah. quickly as well. I've felt it. I've been there. I've had days, dare I say, weeks. And in the last few years, there's probably been the odd month mm. or two where I have literally not being able to figure out what the hell I'm doing. I've got complete, I, I can't think. I've got complete mush as brain. Um, lion's mane and stuff really does help with things like that now. So, of course, I take those things, but uh, that's my choice. And anybody that uh, wants to look into that, please feel free to do so. Um, so, yeah, there is a lack of energy a lot of the times. Some people struggle to get up in the mornings with ADHD. Um, and then we'll get everything done in an hour. <laughs> so... It's, it's, but it doesn't mean it's a nice thing. It doesn't mean, oh, we're going to, we're, we're lazy and then we just want to work for an hour. We, we would choose not to be able to, you know, to work like that yeah. sometimes. And I can tell you, I've definitely struggled with some of the darker sides of it yeah. as well. Um, on a, on a, like in terms of what you do, Elliot, I just want to focus a little bit on that because, um, mm. you know, it's, it's, first of all, there are, there are business coaches out there who will have an avatar where they're not necessarily helping ADHD brainers and focusing on that, but yeah. you know, they, they will help business owners as a whole. Um, so if somebody wanted to work with you, what's a process that you would take them through uh, because of the understanding that you have of, of how their brains work? Uh, I, I always start with identifying strengths, weaknesses, oh non-strengths strengths and non-strengths which is is a challenge and challenging conversation but makes them mm. think um and so that is the first place to start before we even look at the foundations mm. of the business i used to because it's been through a few guises over the years you know because i think i've always used a method i've always used that's worked for me doesn't mean it's going to work for somebody else so that's again come back to the mind mapping it's why mind mapping works really well they've got they they create their own they you know it's not this works for me. This is the method that works for me. So this is going to work for you if you implement it. I'm not here to always tell you what you don't know. I'm here to make you see what you do know. And that's a phrase I use as well, because I think it's really important. Every ADHD brain, every human's different. Yeah. 
So every ADHD brain is very different. They can be very different. Understand those strengths, ticking those things off, some of those non-strengths and the things they do regularly, the stuff they enjoy. Understanding them them as a person, because often they're small business owners, even if they're a you know, major business mm. owner and they want to, they're struggling with knowing what's stopping the business growing, it's usually mm. them. So they have to understand that. Um, so that's where I would start the strengths, non-strengths, uh, the things that excite them, the things they do regularly, the stuff they take for granted, some of the, some of the things they've done really well in the past that's worked really well for them. And again, sometimes they have to go away and speak to their closest, nearest and dearest. And one of those family members that's always harsh, it's always harsh, always says the wrong things. Go and ask that person for their opinion yeah. on you because that's going to get the best, most honest answer out of them. So that's where yeah. I'd start, to be fair. And um, just following on from that, once you've, once you've got through that, what, what's the next yeah. step? Because, again, you're, you're providing structure. Because what, what I've liked, what you've said there is, and I think this is the case, isn't it, Vision Sarah, with lots of kind of business coaches, masterminds, all of that kind of stuff, is they have a methodology, but there is no room for – uh, adapting that methodology to the way that you think and are and where your business is. So I, I really love the fact that you talk about the fact that they can then, you know, the mind mapping, yes, there's a, it's a, it, it's a, it's a framework, but they can put their own thinking into that. Yeah. They fill in the gaps mm. themselves. I help them to fill the gaps in. Then, then that's where I think this is really helps with marketing. And it often does set them up to be able to then start creating content start creating things that they need to do for marketing, start doing long form because they understand now that that isn't there. They do have an avatar. They actually do have somebody they want to work with. And it's often not who they think. Mm. Um, when they start off a conversation, they'll go, oh yeah, I can do all these things. I love doing all these things. They don't fucking love doing all that stuff yeah. at all. You know, so you, so you dig in and then, and then they sort of, they go, oh, yeah, I like working with everybody. I like working with these people in these departments. And then when you speak, particularly consultants, oh yeah, I like to work with everybody. Do they fuck? They like to work with one or two people to come back to them with the information they need. And I, and that is really important. So actually when you go through it, then they know there's specific people they need to focus on. Now, of course, niche, niching is obviously massively important. This is, that's the thing that I want to have to, or like to work on and get people to understand. Once they feel, you see the face change, they feel more relaxed. They're going, oh Jesus, that, that's who I want to work with. I don't want to work with this, you know, these guys that drive Lamborghinis. I actually want to work with somebody that's, you know, um, aware, uh, wants to improve themselves, you know, is, is, is going to be non-judgmental, is going to listen to what I'm saying and take action. Yeah. Not somebody that's just wanting to grow a big business and has no real morals and things like that, which time and time again, they think they want those people that want to grow a business, but actually, well, they want somebody that they can work with that's going to listen and take yeah. action. Um, and so, again, that means that that person that they're working with, or I'm working with, or whatever, or you guys work with, you can then help them to understand how they're going to, they're going to market themselves, not what they need to do to market themselves, but the bits you need to actually have in place to take the next action to then set your stuff up for marketing. And I think... You've got to wind yeah. it back. You have to wind it all the way back. And I don't see a lot of people do that, to be fair. So when it comes to marketing, if we're working with someone with ADHD, what would that person probably find the hardest to do? So I'm thinking, like, is it the visibility? It, like, do they struggle with being visible or is that okay? Do they struggle with actually getting the stuff done or is that okay? So, like, specifically when it comes to marketing, what would somebody with ADHD find the hardest to do to promote their business? Um, I mean, listen, they... I think I think creating stuff is 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 easier than anything else. So it's it's the implement it's the implementation yeah. and the actioning of doing the posts. Um, I, I've used CRMs and and stuff like that. Of course, I've used them effectively when I first started using them. I am shit <laughs> on them now. Like I do it, setting a CRM up, funnels, bits and pieces like that. I can make it all the pretty stuff. I then need to give it to somebody to do that. So yeah. I, I, this is the biggest thing. If you're a marketing company that does all that stuff for them, you want a done, done with you and for you service in essence, really for ADHD brainers, because then they can help you. You can help them. They can help you by giving you what they need. If you just say, right, I need these thing, these three things off you and the talk them through it, make it simple. And they come back to you. You've got something to action, which means that you can market for them really easily. I know this sounds like, well, that's like every business owner, but it's, I think you just need to make it clear. And if they can see it, it's easy. So a lot of people just talk to talk to you, don't they? They just talk to you and tell you, well, I need this, this, and this from you. We need to see something. 
And it's because we're visual mm-hmm. thinkers. That makes it easy for us to remember, recall that information and action the right yeah, that's things. That's what I was going to ask you. I was gonna say, like, really so what's the, what's the predominant the predominant working style of an ADHD is, is a visual style, isn't it? So having a framework yeah. and having a boundary, because I, I suppose that contains within what they need to work within, right? Um, so it's really important. Yeah. Being structured, mm. focused, and organized, which are the three weak, let's say, non strengths yeah. that, that you may have as an ADHD. But you've got to find some way of that working. Yeah. And and I don't know a better way than doing it, you know, using a mind map or multiple yeah. sort of mind maps that are just simplifying it. Because, of course, you can zoom into that and just focus on one part rather than we are, in essence, that mind maps yeah. in here. But what we're doing is looking at everything without any yeah. structure. And, and that's, that's really yeah. difficult. So, Elliot, how did. Like, what did you change, or how did you change when, once once you were told you had ADHD? Like, what was what were the key differences between prior to that and then after that? Oh, it took me. It's, you know, I mean, this was we're talking what two and a half oh. years ago. I suppose I've dis- I discovered that when was when Clubhouse was what twenty twenty one. So we're twenty twenty three now. So twenty. Yeah. So two years ago, I would have discovered around this time. Um, yeah, the first year was a struggle. It was the first year was a struggle. I'm, I'm, I'm then, I'm, I'm, un, I'm un, unloading this information about myself, and then I'm thinking, cry, I, I need to now. I need to remarket myself, which I'd already been trying to do anyway in the, in the year that, prior to that because of the changes yeah. we'd had. So this is, I'm just speaking. This, you know, there's going to be millions of people just like me, just like all of us that have been in that situation. We were just getting somewhere, and then covid happened right mm. and then we had to rethink about what we were going mm. to do change our business mm. models then you've got to think about marketing and, and then some people are doing really well they're doing oh i, I want to do that oh i yeah. want to do that bit of a shiny penny yeah. thing but you know what i mean so it's taken me a while I, and actually what i realized is what i'd done in over the years and used and i didn't know my mapping was a thing genuinely i'd used it for years and never even knew yeah. it was a thing so i'm now trying to think about it and think well, why don't i just go back to what's worked before so I, I then started creating something that would work for me from market stalls. And that's very simple marketing. You're talking to people, you're getting feedback, yeah. you're getting products in, turn that into an eBay business. You know, that simple marketing was very, very yeah. simple. Just, and I don't think we need to overcomplicate it sometimes. I just think that social media makes us yeah. think we have to overcomplicate everything. I think we have to simplify it. I mean, you guys tell me, you're the marketing marketing experts. It's simplification yeah. makes it easier for you to market, yeah, doesn't 100%, it? Yeah, 100%. 100%. Absolutely. So I had to simplify everything. Go back and look at stuff that I've done that worked, but also understand what the hell hadn't worked and gone terribly wrong as well. And that was because I hadn't marketed correctly or yeah. at all. And you're thinking, how would you get yourself out there when you're not telling anybody yeah. you're there? Yeah. So, um, so yeah, it was, a, it was a weird process. It was a, it was a roller coaster, and I'm, I'm you know, I'm, I'm not saying I've got it right now, but, uh, but definitely that niche is definitely working. And so when I say things, it does resonate, and the the right people sort of contact me now. So I suppose you know we've we've sort of got it right eventually, but it's going to keep changing. Yeah. We keep, you know, we develop it. So what's, what's been what's been the kind of big things that have come out of it? Sorry, and then I'll, and then obviously I'll, I'll go to yeah, Sarah because I've talked loads. Um, but what like you know you're now on Revolution Radio on a Friday. I know, yeah. Uh, so you've got your own radio show. You're um, launching a podcast, I believe. You are, yep, which I'm going to be doing uh, from there. Obviously, helping um, ADHDers. You're building a community. Um, yeah. So you know what have been. Just talk about some of the real highlights that have come as a result of now being aware of your abilities and knowing that this is something that you can actually, um, you know, support people with. Joe, you know what the highlight is actually taking somebody that that has uh, has a challenge um, has been sort of stuck. Earning okay money, they're not earning bad money actually. You know, a number of the clients don't earn bad yeah. money, but then that change in a very short period of time to them looking more relaxed with what they're doing, doing not doing less work necessarily, but more doing more work that's that's productive for them and actually way more profitable because they understand their yeah. value. And so they, they're able to go into a meeting particularly consultants and get that across very quickly. So that is a is a huge highlight. So they may not be doing marketing, marketing per se, but they're able to market themselves in a meeting, which is part yeah. of the job, right? If you go to whoever we talk to, well, we can market ourselves every single it? day. Yeah. Absolutely, by word of mouth. Um, so that's a big highlight. Of course, um, if it wasn't for Ify, uh, you know, I wouldn't be doing the radio show, which gives me a platform to talk about the fact that I'm an advocate for ADHD and business and fold those two into yeah. one another, which is, 
I suppose now a couple of passions yeah. of mine. Um, and so, you know, that is a, is a great highlight that's come from it. If it wasn't for me understanding those things and owning the fact that I, I do speak well and I, I do come across well and I can edutain as I call it then um, and I really struggled with that initially I was like and people go oh yeah you've got the gift of the gav you'd be great on radio and all this and I'm like what the fuck I'm <laughs> like really I just talk shit um, but uh, but you know I think there's an ability to prove it <laughs> There's, there's an ability in talking shit and then awesome. entertaining at the yeah. same time, I suppose. So again, that's me yeah, owning yeah. it, right? And 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 um, and I think I feel comfortable with that now. Whereas for for years, honestly, I felt lost. I didn't know where I fitted in. I, I've, I've gone from one role to another. I've got into trouble. I've done all. The, I've done all sorts of stuff that I shouldn't have done, and I should have done, and that some's worked and some other hasn't. Massive failures, and all you think about is the crap and the failures not the good things. So I'm, I'm owning that now. I talk about it and it helps others. And, I, and it's good that getting that feedback, the highlight is getting feedback from people, not to fill my ego, but when I've inspired or motivated them. And I, and I love that. That's, that's, that excites me more than ever. If I could just do podcasts and go and speak to people all day, every day, I think that would be, that's where I want to be, to be honest, I suppose. That's amazing. Sarah? I was going to say that um, given that a high percentage of entrepreneurs do have ADHD, I think it's great that there's people like Elliot who are helping those people. Because what I was thinking as you were talking is, you know, I've got my business and I help people. And thankfully, I do do done with you and done for you. So that's great to hear that that's of some of the support that's needed. But I hadn't necessarily thought about trying to identify whether my clients are ADHD or not. And hence, whether I need to adapt the way I do things to fit way that people work so you've kind of really helped me think about that in terms of now when I'm working with clients I'm thinking like do I need to adapt how I do things do I need to make it more visual for them do I need to do mind maps with them to try and get the information that that I need so I think it's great that there's people like you Elliot that are specifically helping people with ADHD within the entrepreneurial world Um, because obviously collectively we all want to help each other don't we do do really well so absolutely Mm. And, and do you know what there you go. Prime example. You said the highlights. That's a highlight. If I could, we could, it's about creating awareness. There's loads of ADHD awareness, right? There's loads of neurodiversity, neurospicy awareness out there. But are people then just going, oh, I'm aware now. Now what the fuck do I do? Which is pretty well what they're, what most people are doing. Um, and it's not helping. I've got a few ADHD groups and there's not a lot going in there apart from everybody talking about their problems and just seeing if everybody else has got the yeah. same problem. Um, I think we really want to try and find a way that of, of of coming up with solutions for people with similar problems. So great, Sarah, if you want to use use something like that, I, I think it's a really powerful tool. It's a very, very powerful tool. And it's so fucking simple. You couldn't get more simple, I, which is why I didn't think people used it. I use post-it notes. Have, have a conversation, Sarah, get post-it notepads out, create, you know, almost like the, 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 the sort of basic skeleton of it. And then once they say something, use a word or a phrase on that post note and just stick it down. And so then you, that triggers, that's a negative connotation for some people, will spark something in them later on. You don't need to write a load of stuff down. That's the worst thing you can do. Too much text is, is going to also, I wouldn't read it. I'd never going to, I hate emails. <laughs> yeah. Enough. Hey, yeah. emails. That's why I was really afraid to ask you for your email address yesterday. I was like, oh my God, he's going to hate me for giving him this. <laughs> and I'd look, him I'd look at that because it's important. You send him a long email after that as well. This, <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. mate. Uh, listen, Elliot, we could honestly talk for uh, a long time. So we'll definitely have you back at some point um, because I think there is just so much more to unravel in this. But um, for our mm. listeners, for our viewers, uh, how can people get in touch with you? Uh, just uh, We're going to share it in the show notes anyway, but just let us know how people can get in touch with you. Yeah, I mean, look, look for Elliot C. Brown on all social media um, or put Elliot C. Brown ADHD coach or Clarity as well. You can do that and you'll see, you'll come up on Google. Um, yeah, and yeah, you can find me on LinkedIn, um, Threads now, Instagram, uh, Facebook. I'm, I'm pretty well all over the place. I'm not putting, putting out as much content as, as I'd like. Um, so I can't say I'm marketing. I'm going to be coming to you guys to, for, for more marketing advice. But if you um, do, look, I his, think I, if I, you do I, look at his Insta, it is pretty powerful. And I always say that to you, Elliot, like your reels, yeah. etc. They they definitely share what you are so knowledgeable about. Yeah, well, I think I feel like I've spoken more. I was hoping to get more out of you guys oh, today, to be honest. But I ain't shut yeah, up, have well, I? Just, just, <laughs> the, the podcast today was all about you. It was all about you. <laughs> 
100%, man. <laughs> so listen, guys. Um, uh, thank you. Thank you so much to Elliot. He is, um, f- uh, honestly, he is a wealth of knowledge. Um, and we will definitely have him back because I think there's more and more that needs to be made aware of when it comes to the ADHD brain, alternative thinking, neurodiverse, w- whatever phrase uh, works for you. Um, remember to follow, subscribe, um, you know, keep listening. We're on Apple. We're on what are we on? We're on Stitcher. We're, we're on Spotify, everywhere. We're on Spotify. And we're, we're on, on YouTube. So give the YouTube channel a little subscribe. Um, and uh, yeah, let's give uh, the amazing Elliot Brown a round of applause. Whee. Thank you, Elliot. Thank you very much for having me. Thanks, Thanks for, for having being, me. Uh, so we'll see you all uh, at the next one. So bye from me. Bye from me. Bye from me. Bye from me. All right. <laughs> <laughs>